every YouTube that I see on income streams always includes YouTube ad revenue, AdSense, brand partnerships and sponsorships, because all of these YouTubers have a huge audience that they can monetize off of. But what I see in the comments are people are asking, how can I with like a nine to five and no big Instagram following, just a couple hundred people that are all my friends, actually take inspiration from these videos. Well, I'm a beginner YouTuber without a big social media following. In fact, I think right now I have 34 subscribers on YouTube. I'm here to show you how I make money online and travel the world and not leveraging a social media following. Although I'm working on it, so please hit the subscribe button if you're interested in more content around building businesses while traveling the world. I'm super passionate about this topic because did you know that 67% of millennial women were told by their parents to save instead of grow their wealth? Also, ultra high net worth individuals invest 10x more in alternative investments than the mass affluent investors, which are all of us that invest in the stock market. This means angel investing, cryptocurrencies, real estate, and private equity funds. These statistics really spoke to me, so I just wanna share how a regular person like me is trying to grow my wealth and hope that helps you as well. Let's start with income streams. So there is an income stream quadrant that I'll put here. But something to note here is that there's active and passive income. Active income are things that you have to actively do in order to continue making money. And this could be you have a job or you are self-employed and you're a freelancer offering your services. But once you stop working, the money also stops flowing in. Passive income is making money in your sleep, meaning that the money coming in is not as correlated to the amount of work that you do. Business owners have leverage in systems as well as human capital capital, people that they employ, the systems and people who work for the business are able to run successfully without the owner's constant involvement. Then there's investment income. Investment income usually comes from accumulated money that you made in the other three quadrants that you can now invest in stocks or angel investments, real estate, cryptocurrencies, etc. If you really want financial independence, you have to move from active work to passive work. And then also think about leverage where you don't exchange your own time for money anymore and you build out or invest in the systems, people and capital to make those work for you to make income without you actively having to do the work. So now using this quadrant, I'll share with you my streams of income. Stream number one is that I consult and freelance. This is what I started doing when I left my job in 2018. It was the first thing that I did to support myself. I had previously worked in e-commerce in San Francisco. And so after I left my job, a few accounts as well as people in my network reached out to ask me whether I can help them on building their e-commerce arms of their existing businesses, such as sourcing sellers, sourcing goods, Good products, how, what is the logic behind an e-commerce marketplace. That's pretty much what I did. I ch started with charging $60 an hour, which eventually moved up to $100, $150 an hour. I sometimes was employed on a contract basis directly with someone in my network, or sometimes someone would reach out to me on Upwork which is a common freelancing website. So I recommend you starting there. If you are looking to leave your nine to five or start a side hustle, think about what skills that you have within your current day job that you are giving to your existing company that other companies might also need. And you can start there by building up your own clientele base and charging by the hour or by project, and then building that business up until you're ready to leave that nine to five. I also do expert consultations on platforms like GLG and Primary Insight, where investment firms or PE funds typically use them to try to contact experts in a certain field for one hour or two hour consultations on the industry or about a company that they want to invest in. And so after I registered for those platforms, I typically charge $250 to $400 per hour. And these firms just kind of find me. I hop on a Zoom call with them and share with them what I know, my opinions and experiences. Demand really varies. I do maybe one to two calls per week at you know, 250 to $400 per hour. So in a month, it's a solid 2K of extra income. Next, most of my income right now comes from building my multiple six figure business uh, as a business owner called Beta Camp. I actually only started this business in May 2020, so it hasn't even been a full year yet. 
But back then, my co-founder and I saw this gap in the education space on guiding high school students to understand and better prepare for the careers that will be really in demand 10 years from now, the ones that might not even exist today, and also help high school students gain the essential skills like problem solving, creativity, making decisions with incomplete information, facing uncertainty, pivoting from failure, all these things that they don't learn in traditional schools. And of course, the entrepreneurial mindset. And we teach them that all through building their own revenue generating startups. On top of that, it was a really great time to start the business because due to COVID, a lot of summer enrichment programs were being canceled. And all of a sudden, these really talented high school students, really ambitious ones, didn't have anything to do for the summer. We launched a website in a weekend and then started our marketing in different forums and communities. By the end of the week, we had 180 parents ready to attend an information session and extremely interested in our programming. And just within that month, we actually got over 120 applications. We accepted 75 students at $1,200 USD per student. And this was five times cheaper than all the other entrepreneurial programs out there, about $20 per hour of actually content creative for a six week program. Because we got such great reviews from the summer, we actually run three cohorts now per year. It was definitely very, very active income, active work to start to run this business. We were definitely working 16 hour days for the whole six weeks of the program and the four weeks before that, and then launching our fall program. But since our fall program, we've really leveraged and built out systems to hire employees to run the program as well. And now the program pretty much runs without me and I get to learn new things to try to figure out different distribution channels and strategies to bring in more students. I'm also actively looking and working on several different side projects that will hopefully turn into real businesses soon. So do you think that you can start an online business with the skills that you currently have at your day job or whatever you have previously worked on? Why or why not? Let me know in the comments. And now we'll move on to passive income, investment income. So this is my investment portfolio with my husband. I'm 27 and he's 29 for that kind of context. And we actually published this in a sub stack that we do send out to our friends. You can find it in the link below, but let's get right to it. We invest in a whole bunch of different alternative investments. The highest in percentage is of course our 401k. It is very, very large percentage of our total portfolio because my husband used to work at Google and Google did a huge 401k matching. So most of it is his. Um, we do hold quite a bit of cash on hand, um, closer to like $20,000, $30,000 in cash. And that is kind of operating income for my business. So I don't actually even fully own all of it because I do have a co-founder, but that's how much is in our active bank accounts in cash right now. We invest in crypto. This has actually gone up since we created this last month but I invest weekly um, through dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin and Ethereum very casually on Coinbase. I don't do anything fancy. My husband does that as well. We also have 15.7% in robo or index funds. So that's just money that is managed by Wealthfront or Wealthsimple or Charles Schwab, fully robo investing or index funds like the S&P 500 that's already fairly diversified and safe. We have 4.2% in angel investments. And actually below here, you see the angel investments that we've already made. We did commit to another investment. Angel investments are basically pre-seed or seed stage companies that are looking for friends and family around or just from a few significant investors to get them off the ground. My personal philosophy in this is to really understand the business model, really believe in the problem. And I've really only invested in friends or friends of friends. Um, very, very exciting though, because side uh, is an investment that I had made in 2018. It is already a unicorn. So over $1 billion in valuation, I only put in, I think under $1,000. It's definitely very diluted now, but it's probably hopefully going to be a success story. Um, didactic isn't even called didactic anymore. It's called Maven. Um, and I had put in 
$5,000 and copy AI, we put in $15,000. And those are very recent investments and pretty small percentage of our total portfolio only invest what you can lose. And I try my best to help these companies grow as well. We have close to 20% in foreign investment. In foreign investment, it was actually just in this one fund. We managed to get connected to a fund manager in Hong Kong that invests in uh, Japanese hotels. So there's a lot of distressed hospitality businesses in everywhere in the world right now. And this fund invested and bought out a Japanese hotel in Kyoto. And so we invested to be part of that one fund. And the only thing this fund did was buy out that hotel. Um, hopefully that returns um, a good investment within a short time frame because their goal is to actually turn it into REITs. Um, and then we also own half a condo with my mom. My mom and us, we split it 50-50. We recently purchased a condo in Toronto, really close to the University of Toronto. And the goal of that is to also have rental income. But our strategy here was just that, you know, interest rates are extremely low right now. We are hoping that this... Um, condo will go up in value very quickly, especially with the inflation that's happening in North America right now. And then finally, individual stock 7.5%. That is just the individual stocks that we have picked out of companies that we really understand, believe in, and we think are undervalued right now and will go up, the stock price will go up. So that is my investment portfolio. I definitely recognize that I am very, very privileged to be able to make all of these investments, but I also hope that my story shows you that you can build a really successful business, bootstrapped, make multiple six figures. If I can do it, then you can also do it. And I only started that in May, 2020. Prior to that, I had worked three, four years in Silicon Valley and accumulated a network as well as a skill set that I was able to freelance and consult online as well. That is kind of my background on how I'm able to achieve this. And of course, I have a partner. My husband is a software engineer that works for a company in New York, and we have combined our finances. If you are looking for business ideas to build online, I do have a 30 ideas for global founders. It is a list of 30 ideas that I wish that I had the time to build. I hope someone will build it. Check out the link in um, the description. If you like this, please subscribe and hit the like button and leave me a comment on what you want to see.